So I realized on my previous video that I was talking about the books that I planned on reading for the month but I was not able to give you a list of books that I have read that I would recommend. So today we're going to do just that. So what I'm planning to do for this video is I'm going to give you four categories and then a list of books under that category. And this category is just a personal thing I made up so it would be easier for me to give you the list. So those categories will be creepy children, zombies, gore, and everything else. This everything, this fourth category will be all the other books that would be a little too tedious if I'm going to break them down into their own category. So yeah, all those books under those categories will be books that I have read in the past few years that I think some of you will probably enjoy. Um, there are books that you would generally consider creepy, spooky, eerie, or well, scary in whatever in different ways. So that said, a lot of these books will have trigger warnings and I don't think I, I'll be able to list out all the trigger warnings for each because there's a, there are a lot of books and a lot of these books have a lot of trigger warnings so, so it's best if you go through Google and check whatever trigger warnings there are because there are a lot. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to miss a lot of trigger warnings. So yeah, let's get started. So the first category we're going to tackle would be creepy children. Children really creep me out. When it comes to horror books, those with children, I don't know, it's because of, I guess it's because it, it plays into the innocence of a child. I think that's why most anything about children can get really creepy. So anyway, the first book, would be Naomi's Room by Jonathan Eichliff. I read this, I don't know, a few years ago and it's basically about a grieving family. The main character, it's from the point of view of the father. So what I really enjoyed about it is that it focuses on the grieving father. You already know that the child is dead, right? Off the bat, you know, the, the child is dead, but what you don't know is how she died and why she died. It really dives into the psyche of someone who's grieving. Some people who are grieving, they would try and find the dead person in all the things that are left behind. You know, like trying to find meaning on what was left behind by um, the dead person. So it gets a little creepy because then you'd question at some point is if what the father, it's in first person, you get to question if is this what he is seeing or is this just all in his mind and throughout the book the death of the child is still being investigated that's basically what you're getting from this book overall it's a bit thriller but more on a father a family a very young family going through the stage of grief um, so that's what it's all about. So the next book is A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. I got this copy from Oz, from Israel, and I heard about the, this book over at Books and Tea. I think it was also during Spooks and Tea when I learned about this. This book is a little hard to recommend because it deals with demonic possession and mental illness. It blurs the line and that can be problematic. But the author has said that his focus was not to diminish but to actually magnify the fact that a lot of people will, which this is actually very true here in the Philippines, that a lot of people would dismiss a mental illness as demonic possession. And that's what this book is trying to do. Whether it's successful is it depends on who's reading. For my case though, I think it's really blurry between that because to some people who are already prejudiced going in this book will probably misinterpret a lot of things in this book. If you dive into it informed, 
ahead of time, then I think you'll be able to appreciate the things that the author was trying to do for this book. Um, so anyway, A Head Full of Ghosts is told from the point of view of a child. A female child, the sister of the possessed or the person who is going through a diagnosis of a mental illness. And the thing is, since it's told in a, from the point of view of a child, I'm not sure if it adds to the creep. I guess it does add a bit to the creep factor, but I can see how this can annoy a lot of other people who does not like children telling the story. It wasn't that much of a problem for me, but it can be a problem to others. But if you enjoy that kind of storytelling from a point of view of a child, then you might enjoy this one. And what happens in the story is that the main character, this child who is narrating the story, is telling you what she's seeing, that's what, what to her is happening to her sister. It gets really interesting because what the family does is they fall into this trap of going to a reality TV and just imagine how that affects the development of a child, especially to the child who is going through a mental illness. And this reality TV isn't even focusing on mental illness but is focusing on the demonic possession. It's selling the family on demonic possession. And of course that's gonna gain a lot of views. That's gonna gain a lot of media traction and all that. And so yeah, that's what you're getting with this book. Okay, so the next book is this one I went through through an audiobook. It was really well narrated. It's Victoria Schwab's City of Ghosts. So it's a middle grade book, but I actually really enjoyed it. Um, it may be marketed as a story for children because middle grade, but a lot of scenes actually creep me out. So that said, it's, it's a middle grade book that's definitely something that even older audience would enjoy. And it's a series, and it's clearly a series because a lot of things that will be introduced to the story, a lot of things introduced to the story will not be resolved in just this book. You know that it will be tackled on the next book, probably answered on the next book, or on the third and last book. I think it's a trilogy. Yeah, I think it's a trilogy. And I have not read the second book yet, but I do plan, it, it was that much fun that I do plan on reading the second book. So in City of Ghosts, you get a family of ghost hunters. And the thing, and also, and just like Head Full of Ghosts, they do have a reality TV show. But in um, what's different here is that where in Head Full of Ghosts, it's a family televised as, um, as a possession story. City of Ghosts is where the family are ghost hunters, so they're being televised as people hunting for ghosts. So that's how they're different. And so, yeah, um, City of Ghosts is in a sense lighter than Head Full of Ghosts, but it's still creepy. It, there, there's still that creepy vibe. And also, they are ghost hunters, but the parents, they try to go they, they're ghost hunting through facts and science and whatever research, but they can't really see ghosts. Their daughter, though, the main character, Cassidy, can see ghosts. She has a best friend that's a ghost. And that's basically what happens in the story. They, the family goes to a place to hunt ghosts, and since the child, the main character, can see ghosts. She gets on into all these crazy things happening because of her ability. Yeah, it's a really fun book and I, I'm definitely going to read the sequel once I get a copy. So the next book under Creepy Children is the Genesee Lang series by Edgar Calabia Samar. So the first book, from the title alone, you can see it's Tiyanak ng Tabun. So 
it's a book that's not in English, so sorry if you cannot understand Tagalog, you will not be able to enjoy this book, but I hope it gets translation because I know a lot of people who wants to read this but does not understand or is not comfortable reading in Tagalog. So, yeah. Anyway, so the first of the series, it says right in the title that Tianak ng Tabon. A Tianak is a Philippine mythological creature that is basically a child. It's a creature in the form of a child and what they usually do is they look like a child, they act like a child, but they're not a child. And they play on their prey, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, so basically they toy with their prey and then they eat them or kill them, but mostly to eat them. Anyway, but that's not what the story is about. It's a different take on our Philippine mythological creatures. And I've talked about this in my other videos, but basically this book is marketed as um, a video game. It is, but for me, as a whole, it redefines everything we know about Philippine mythological creatures. It's it's really good. And the, it's, the downside to it is that there's a lot of info dumping. It can get really slow, but it's necessary because the author really redefined what we know of mythological creatures of the Philippines. And that information is necessary for you to appreciate everything else that goes on in the story. So all that info dumping does pay off as you go along with the book, as the plot moves on, and as you get to the second book. It gets really, really good as you keep going. Some people enjoy this thinking that, yes, video games. It's, um, it's a Filipino story that takes on video games and that's how a lot of people will um, will think about when they dive into this book and they forget occasionally a lot of us would forget that it's still about mythological creatures and our mythological creatures most more often than not gets really creepy so yeah that book actually got, gets creepy all right so those are the four books that I would group together as creepy children Next, I'll be giving you two books that are about zombies. And the first one, The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. So this is probably the first book that I annotated. And I first heard about it um, after seeing the trailer of the movie. Um, yeah, when I heard it was a movie, I watched the trailer and then I found out that it was from a book. And what this is about, it, it starts out as a lot of plot points is, you can really say it's typical zombie story. But as you go along, as you keep going through the plot, you will realize how different it is from all the other zombie stories. And the movie, I, I forget if I read the book before the movie, I probably read the book before the movie. But either way, the movie is really good. So what happens in this book is that the world, the world, although it doesn't really feel like it's the whole world, well, the world, or let's say the Western world, has succumbed into this world of zombies. You'll have to read how that happens and why that happens. And basically there's a group of scientists, a group of people trying to observe and understand the changes they're seeing from the zombies. Something is going on. Something is different about the zombies that they are seeing. And it's a very intellectual read. You can basically, you know, like you said that the movie is really well done as an adaptation for me. You can basically just watch the trailer of the movie and get the gist of what the story is about, both, both for the movie and for this book. And like I said, it's a very intellectual read. I, and I mean that in the sense that it's one of the books that I've read that has a lot of new terms, new to me terms, that I 
I found myself always checking a dictionary. I even annotated a lot of pages on here that has definition of terms. Yeah. I annotated some parts and yeah, because this was the time that I was afraid to write on a book. So see, there's this page that I even just wrote definitions on the side. So it it's not only, I don't know what year I read this, but it's not only stimulating you in the sense of those new words too. When I say intelligent read, it's not just that, that you see a lot of new words and a lot of new terms, but it's also on the house and the whys of the zombies. And usually, they, usually some zombie stories is just action. A lot of people would prefer it going action and, you know, zombies running around, shooting and whatever. It, there, is, there is part of that, but in this book, but it, it dives to the house and the wise of it as a zombie and then it I can't say more because it will probably spoil you. But yeah, it's a great read. But it's one that definitely needs your attention when you sit down and you just it needs you to focus on it for you to appreciate the things it's talking about. In short, you need to be in the right headspace when reading it. Because if you go into it and without, when you're not in the mood to read something that has a lot of details, you will not be able to enjoy this book. But it's worth it. I'm saying, it's as a zombie book, the way the author takes into this zombie book, it's worth the read. And also, there is, apparently it has a sequel, The Boy on the Bridge, and I have not, I don't know how it has a sequel, I'm guessing it's probably set in the same universe, but um, the way this book ended, I don't. It's not necessary to read the sequel, but I haven't read the sequel, so yeah. Anyway, the how how it ended, how that ended, it as a standalone is good enough for me. So the second zombie book that I have read and that I will recommend will, will be World War Z by Brooks. So this. This one I would say is definitely a typical zombie story. And the thing is, I actually really enjoyed this for the fact that for once it's finally a zombie story that is worldwide. And I mean, it, it's inclusive. It's not just, hey, zombie story, hey, the world is ending, but we only see the Western side of it. So when it really deserves, it lives up to its name, World War Z, like world. So um, yeah, the, the story is there's the interviewer going to a lot of places in the world, different countries, interviewing survivors of the zombie apocalypse. So they're basically just telling you what has happened, how did they survive. So with that in mind, you would think that it, it's in a way a hopeful story because they survived. They are being interviewed and you know that these people survived. So the thing is, it's it's about zombies but it's very much like a pandemic story. And I know we're in the middle of a pandemic so if reading anything that is like a pandemic will be uncomfortable for you, then I suggest you avoid this story. Because yeah, it is very much a pandemic story than a zombie. I mean, it's like a pandemic story in the form of a zombie story. That, yeah, that's it. If you're not comfortable reading anything about the pandemic right now, avoid this book. But if you are fine with that, this book will not disappoint. Now, what's also really interesting is that the book also shows how other life forms in this planet is coping. And I mean like the plants, the animals, they're included in this story because when you say the world, it's not just humans living in this planet. And that's that's really, I really appreciated that one. It doesn't go too much detail, but you know, it's there. And also one of the best parts I like that the book covers is that it mentions um, essential work. I think that's something that's, that's also relevant to us 
now because it shows what kind of jobs and what kind of work is considered essential. I think in the early months of the pandemic we are in now, a lot of people would be insulting other jobs, saying that they're, look how you're not essential, uh, look how what you're doing is not actually important, which is actually not true. Every single kind of job, even if you might think it's not important, is actually useful in other ways. And the book, World War Z, covers that, showing how, let's say, the film industry. There's a portion in the book that covers the um, point of view of, I think it was Hollywood, or anyway, it's entertainment industry. Yeah, there. It covers the entertainment industry and how, sure, they're not doctors, sure, they're not military, they're not necessarily frontliners, but the entertainment industry still helps because of how they refresh the mental state of the people who have nothing else to do. What this book shows us is that the rest of the people who are not doing anything, the entertainment industry keeps those people entertained. It's from the word entertain. And how is it helping people during a pandemic? It gives light to that. And some people will say, oh, look at you, you're a celebrity, you're useless now. But I, I, I really like how the book covers that and shows you that just because you're not in the front lines of a pandemic, it doesn't mean you're useless. And it doesn't mean that everyone else will not appreciate or need your services. So yeah, that's definitely something I really, really liked also about World War Z. It's, it encompasses a lot of things aside from having zombies is basically an apocalypse with zombies and how the world and when you say the world it's not just one person one country or one part of the world it's really the world coping with that apocalypse the pandemic so yeah there's that okay so let's move on to the next category or group or whatever next up would be gore okay gore for me is it doesn't really scare me it's more of very entertaining for me actually i enjoy reading gore if you enjoy hostel and final destination then these kinds of books might be something you will enjoy reading so first on my list is tj Payne's intercepts so this book is basically about government conspiracy and if you enjoy that kind of stories you'll enjoy this one uh, it has a rough start i don't think i quite enjoyed how it started but as the plot progressed it's got it got gory i did not expect it to go gore but it got bloodier and bloodier and i i, I enjoyed it and although it's not perfect we can pick at its flaws if we if i really want to it's, it's got a lot of flaws, definitely, but overall, the bloody, the brutal stuff that happens was just so much fun that I enjoyed it too much to even bother with all the flaws. What I did not like, though, was there was just some random weird sex scene that just did not, like, why? Why is this there? It, it could have been not included and it would have been completely fine. The story would have been completely fine, but it's there anyway the book it gets really bloody and it also leans um, a bit to the paranormal side uh, basically what happens is that the main character works for the government and they do experimentations on people and of course things like those something can always go wrong in those kind of stories so there's there's that and that's that's really what you're reading the things that just went wrong and if you enjoy a bloody read that it just gets bloodier and bloodier as you keep going then you'll enjoy this one and when i say bloody I and mean, it can get really graphic and that was that was a fun surprise for me so the next two books that would i that i would put under gore would be filipino books and the first one is 29th of february by 
Maria Ana Teresa Cruzati. That is a mouthful. But anyway, the author is actually a Wattpad author and writes in The Lady in Black. Here you, go. Um, you can find her on Wattpad, The Lady in Black 09. And she's known for writing um, dark stories. So if you if Wattpad is your thing and you like dark stories, you can look for that username over there and I think I think she's written a lot of really good ones. I have not checked yet. I haven't really dived into Wattpad yet. But if I was going to get into Wattpad then that that's the author that's definitely first on my list of go to. So it's a thick book. It's it's fairly thick. For what happens, it gets repetitive. But what I really enjoyed about it is it's it's the gore. I really really enjoyed the gore. The whole time I keep remembering Final Destination, and yeah, that's basically it. It felt so much like a Filipino version of Final Destination, but with a leaning more into paranormal and yeah it's it it starts out with a few pages of english but as a whole the, the story is in tagalog and i don't think it's ever going to be translated into english but yeah it, it was a fun read so basically what happens is that there's a group of friends goes on vacation to a private resort and of course what could go wrong in a private resort when it's just the group of friends with a shady background. What could go wrong, right? So things get crazy, things get bloody, and I'm at that ending. I'm gonna say. So the next Filipino author that is still under gore. This one is a comics, Tabi Po by Melvin Malonzo. It's got really good art actually and it's again like much like Jano Silang it's a, a take on our Philippine mythologic creatures mostly the Aswangs and redefining that although it's redefining it's not not as much as Jano Silang but it's it's also a really good take on our on the Aswangs specifically the Aswangs and it's got really good art also. I think it's it's core, yeah. It just gets bloody every almost every single page. There's nudity it's a it's for mature audiences. There's nudity, there's cannibalism, and yeah, I'll just show you one page that should basically sum up what it's all about. So if you can see that one, that's basically what it's all about. Or is it though? I've only read this this one. I think it's got three issues, and the only thing I didn't like about it is the handling of nudity com when you compare it to how male and female nudity was handled. And I think I don't know. It just felt so. It's a very male way of handling nudity, where the female is out is drawn in full glory with very almost always very gifted chests and the male is given a little more covering even though they're yeah you'll understand it once if you read it but it doesn't that that's my only problem with it overall it's actually a fun read people who are sensitive to religion though might should it takes a jab on a specific religion i think mostly catholic catholicism yeah it takes a jab on catholicism and uh, i can see how other people might not like that but disclaimer i am catholic and i don't mind it but i see how other people will mind so yeah that let's just say it's a comic that I'm definitely not going to show my mother. That's it. So we're down to the last few books and the last category which is everything else. So the first book, should I even say first book? 
Well, anyway, so next we're going to talk about is Colleen Hoover's Verity. And no, it is not tagged as a horror book. It's actually tagged as mystery thriller suspense. But I'm very sure I'm not the only one who's read this and was halfway through thinking that maybe this is actually this might actually become something paranormal or is this actually a horror book? And yes, it's Colleen Hoover. As in Colleen Hoover who wrote all those young adult and new adult romance books. She wrote this and it's something that's not what you would expect her to write. Uh, yeah, the romance is still there but it's not kinda, it kind, it's not really the focus. It's more on the suspense and the house and the wise and it's it's really different. It's not the usual Colleen Hoover and I liked it. I'm I'm glad she wrote something that I did not expect her to write. If you are a sensitive reader, do not read this book at all. When you dive into this book, just know that if I can si use just one word, it's mindfuck. That's what this book is all about. In a lot of ways, it's just mindfuck. So what happens is that this girl helping out, she's living in the house, trying to finish, help finish a book um, to help finish writing something. She discovers a lot of things that she's not supposed to discover. And yet things it get really messed up that basically what happened is just messed up who's messed up is i don't even know after finishing the book i just didn't know anymore that's how i felt and i, I loved it I, I loved how by the end of the book i just don't know what to think anymore I still don't know what to think about it. I still don't know what what to believe after reading all of that and it's really really messed up. It's a very messed up book. It's dark, it's disturbing and it's an adult. It's an adult book. For the most part, it's all about just messing with what you think. It was taxing for my brain by the end of all that after investing all my brain cells into what just happened in the previous few chapters i get those last few chapters and it was really fun to read so there's that then the next book i'm going to tell you about is murakami's after dark if you want a short book that has creepy vibes more of eerie than spooky then you might want to read this. If you've read any other Murakami books, then you know that things can get really weird. So what happens is this book is just, it's really just telling you things that happen after dark. Things that the narrator will make you think happens in dark. It's told in third person with some points of it written in second person. And I like how detached the narrator is. That's what makes it a fun to read book and there were it's not really written as a horror book or anything spooky or yeah it's not really marketed as that but there were parts where I really felt it just creeped me out. I guess from my over imagination also that helps but yeah I think that also that the narrator's detachedness to the, the author being detached, especially in the second person point of view, really helps, it adds to the creep factor. So if you want a short story, a short read, it's only 200, less than 250 pages. It's only less than 250 pages and it's easy to read. And, but yeah, always just keep in mind that it is a Murakami book, so things can get really weird. Next is... Ghost Bride by Yang Si Chu. This is this book already has a Netflix adaptation series. It's six episodes. I have not watched it yet, but the more I think about this, the more I remember this book, the more I want to watch it. I hope I can watch it. 
and it's basically about death, death and the afterlife. It dives into the Chinese Malaysian culture on how they deal with death and the afterlife and I really enjoyed it. It has its creepy moments but for the most part I really enjoyed learning about the culture. Before I read this I, ha I am completely ignorant on how they go about um, death and the afterlife. It was a very fun experience to me because it was all really new. I think it would fall under a young adult. It doesn't go far away from what you would expect from a young adult novel. But for the most part, it really dives into the Chinese Malaysian culture and it was really, really fun to read about. Just note that it talks about death and it can get a little depressing. Uh, that was what I felt about in, I think, the first half of the book. That's how I felt. It got depressing just talking consistently about death and the afterlife and just death, death, death. If you're not comfortable with that, then I say don't read it, especially if you just recently lost someone. I don't think this is a book that you should be reading yet until you are ready to read anything that covers death and the afterlife. So the next book I want, just, I really just want to include this because it's my favorite franchise. Um, this book. It's Diablo 3's Book of Cain. It covers the lore that's mostly from the Diablo 3 universe. And this book, it got, it's got really nice artwork and it goes and dives into the lore of the video game. It's written from the point of view of Cain. So it's Book of Cain. Cain is a horodrim and okay, I'm not gonna... You'll know who he is if you played the game. So Cain basically wrote a letter to someone, I'm not gonna spoil anything, he wrote a letter to someone and that letter includes describing things that he wrote and this basically is his journal of sorts and it shows a lot of really great artwork and see some people will find it creepy. I, my, my cousin said it creeps her out. It's, it's really nice drawings. Let me see, see it's, it's really nice artwork. I really wish I can get my hands on the books. There are novels written in the world of Diablo and I would really love to read those but unfortunately they're only sold in the US and they're really expensive for a novel. I hope someday I'll be able to get a copy and sadly I don't know why they don't even have an ebook. If you're a fan of the video game you, you might find that book interesting. Or if you just want to try reading a novel or a book that's based on a video game, that one's really good to look at. Visually, the art is just really good. I, I love the art of that. And lastly, I'm going to include the Bourbon Kids series. This is the last book I'm going to be recommending. And this is the Bourbon Kids series. The first book, I don't have it, I lent it to someone and I hope she's already reading it, please. But anyway, the Bourbon Kids series, it's four, I'm not sure if it's only four books, but it's by Anonymous. And the first book of the series is actually entitled The Book With No Name. A lot of people would always raise their eyebrows or would laugh whenever I talk about this book because it's the book with no name by Anonymous. And it sounds like a joke, but it's not. It's an actual novel. It's, it, it really is an actual novel. So I first heard about this book when I randomly went inside Fully Booked and it was, since it's letter A, it's on the front shelves. And I got curious, it says Anonymous. I don't know what the story was about. I did not care, I just got it and I bought it because the title and the author name was enough to get me curious and I was surprised. Um, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. It's basically about a guy who gets empowered when he drinks bourbon. That's why it's called the Bourbon Kid series and it's, it's, the plot is a lot deeper than that actually and it's actually a lot of fun. And there's vampires, there's werewolves, a lot of paranormal things going on, and there's dead celebrities. It, 
it, it's very wacky it's not the horror i did not feel scared about it but it's if you like paranormal things you will enjoy that but it has a different twist to it and mostly why i enjoyed it is because of how wacky it is i mean there's some there's a character there who's dressed as elvis and he kills people just imagine that it's a really wacky read and i enjoyed it so much and i i probably will talk about this book a lot more mm. and the series so yeah it uh, some people might find it creepy it does have a bit a bit of creep creepy vibes in some parts of the plot but for the most part it's just really a wacky read it's been a long time since i've read anything from this author and i'm excited to pick up another book by this author so yeah you should check that out if you like wacky reads like just wacky that gets a little serious but alas most of for the most part it's just really wacky so those are the books that i recommend for the spooky season spooky horror yeah not all scary but you know it's the it would still fit into the whole spooky theme i guess so which of those books have you read or have been planning to read but haven't yet i hope i've helped you decide to pick those books up or not pick those books up it's completely fine so anyway see you in the next one through google or whatever search Oh my god, Google, no. According to Wicked.